Hey there, everyone, and welcome to Firebase Release Notes for September, where we'll highlight six releases today. We're starting off with a big one, as we just launched version 9 of our JavaScript SDK, which fully adopts JavaScript modules. This release is optimized for the elimination of unused code, a process known as tree shape. Now, this reduces the amount of Firebase code that ends up in your JavaScript bundles, and in some scenarios, that can be up to 80%. Now, this new SDK has a completely different syntax, but it also has a compatibility mode so that you can get started quickly. And from there on, just follow the examples in the upgrade guide that are linked below to step by step reduce the size of your web. Regular viewers of the show probably noticed that I've mentioned support for more Apple platforms in quite a few episodes. Well, with contributions from our developer community, we've expanded the list of Apple platforms that Firebase supports to include iOS, macOS, Catalyst, tvOS, and watchOS. And you can now find the full table of supported Apple platforms and Firebase products in the documentation that I linked below. And is your favorite product platform combination missing? Well, head over to GitHub now, because we'd love to see your pull request for it. Cloud Functions scales its resource usage based on the number of incoming requests. This means that it can scale down to zero usage and does zero costs when there are no requests coming in. But starting a new resource takes some time, and your visitors may notice this so-called cold start. You can now control the scaling behavior of Cloud Functions through code. To reduce the number of cold starts, you can set a minimum number of instances. But keeping instances warm is a paid feature, so the CLI will tell you about this cost when you first deploy with it. You can also set a maximum number of instances, for example, to guard against excessive scale-up costs or when accessing legacy infrastructure that doesn't auto-scale like Cloud Functions does. Read all about it in the docs that are linked below. Have you ever looked at your data in Firestore and wondered who did what, where, and when to it? Well, in the past months, we added the ability to write audit logs that help you answer precisely that question. Audit logs are written to cloud logging, and for Firestore, those include administrative read and write operations that show access to the metadata and configuration information. You can also let Firestore log all data read and write operations, so that you can see exactly who accessed what collections and what documents. To enable these audit logs, follow the instructions in the documentation. You can now use both pre-populated and predictive audiences from Google Analytics to target users in A-B testing and cloud messaging. And this means that you can now change the behavior of your app based on the predicted actions that your users will take based on their past behavior. Check out the documentation or the new video in the Optimize Your App Revenue series, where Summit shows you how to balance revenue from in-app purchases and from ads by using these predictive audiences. Say that you've published that new game that you worked on so hard for so long, only to find out that you made it too difficult and that users are leaving one-star reviews. Well, with Remote Config, you can change your game configuration from within the Firebase console without having to release a new build of the app. And you can now specify data types for your Remote Config parameters. When you specify a type for a parameter, it provides cross-team visibility in what values your code expects, and it allows the console and the REST API to validate the parameter values and to avoid costly mistakes that might break your app. The Firebase Summit is returning as a virtual event on November 10th this year. And I can't wait to see you all there. Well, uh, here again. Follow us on Twitter for more updates on the event in the coming weeks. And those were all the updates we have time for today, folks. If you like them, give us a like or subscribe to the channel below. My name is Franco Puff, and I'll see you on a future episode of Firebase Release Notes.